Hey, on this video, I'm going to be sharing what I learned so far. Uh, Amazon has a new API. As you can see on this uh, URL, they have a new seller partner API. Um, so far, I had a lot of issues trying to connect, trying to get a token. Uh, there's a lot of things that it's supposed to be easy, but it's not. So some of you might have seller central accounts some of you might have vendor central accounts there are two different portals in amazon just getting uh, help from those two portals is very difficult at least in my case but uh, once you get help from amazon and they build or they create the api token for you the app that they ask you to do so the information from Amazon is on GitHub, and this is I'll put the link in the description. But there's a lot of there's a Java library and a C sharp library, and there's a lot of documents that you have to read. And I'm letting you know again, you have to read. But once you read your documents and create um, the API token, the app that they request request per their instructions um, let me click on this one and on this one here's the steps that you need to follow there's a lot of st steps including creating a AWS account a user IAM user a policy a role it's a whole lot of things to do just to connect to their store so once you follow this instructions that they've given you, then you will be able to uh, use my getting started kind of project. It's just a template for everybody to get an idea. But here's the uh, .NET or C Sharp library that they created. This is not mine. This is what they has have uh, deployed on GitHub that you can use. So instead of uh, guessing how to use it, I'm just gonna show you a right, quick example how you can use it. So without wasting any time, I'm gonna open my Visual Studio and show you. But before I go, make sure you click around the GitHub and you can see that the all the classes are here. And what I did is to make it simple, I downloaded this uh, project, all these classes, and I created a, a C Sharp library class for me just to try it out. So here's what I did. I just have a basic project here in Visual Studio. What I did is I copy all the libraries that you saw on GitHub. They're all here. I haven't changed anything at all. This is all Amazon's code, all these files. I haven't touched anything. Uh, as you can see, there's more and there's that. Now, the only thing I did was create this one, this project. It's a, um, a class library. So I'm using .NET 4.7. You can use whatever you want. And your project, your Class library, you can name it whatever you want to. It doesn't just because you see here that name, signer, you can name it whatever you want. It doesn't have to be that. So name it whatever you want. Make sure you have a class library. And then after that, what I did is I added, I'll show you the packages that you need. There are two packet packages you need. That's all you need. And right after that, what I did, in my case, um, I created another class here. Just a basic class, nothing fancy. There are some properties here uh, that you need. If you don't have these values, you cannot use this template, basically. And all this information doesn't come from the GitHub or anything. It comes down to uh, if you have a seller central account under developer 
or you have a vendor central account on the developer the app section and for that it was really difficult to get help from Amazon but at the end you know they will help you out but once you have that information then this will make more sense to you so I have this library uh, properties and in here as you can see it's just passing on those properties we initialize the class and then here's what you sign, how you sign your your content, basically. That's the key part of all, all of all this, is signing the content before you talk to Amazon API. Here, as you can see, the content. And for the user agent, you can type whatever you want here. It doesn't have to be YouTube. You can put your own name or company name, whatever you want. And I'm using Windows 10, so that's what I'm using here. Now, so far, this setup has worked for me. Uh, it could change later on. They might change their API or anything else, and then it will stop working. So be careful. And that's all that I did. And under Get Token, this is, all, this is also what I created it, but they also have this call. And it has Get Access Token. So this is just a shorthand, but it's the same thing. So based on this class, just to help me out when I'm using, when I'm calling Amazon, that's all that I made it for. So now that's my class library. Now my client, what I call my client or anything you want, it could be MVC, console, whatever you want. It's There's no limit. And here, what I did is I created this one is a console application, nothing fancy. And then oh, the next thing what I did is I added two packages. And these packages are the same thing that I have on the other project. So they match with this one and the same thing. Okay. So the next thing that I did is there's a folder called portal model and basically it's just a, a class and basically when i serialize the payload that's what amazon calls it payload uh, you can deserialize and serialize back the order objects the items build to and all that stuff pretty basic stuff and then and the next thing what i did in my case you could use this example or a different way. I have a file here, settings file. So here's where the information needs to go. Now this is private. Uh, don't share this information with anyone. But here's where, uh, just to test it out, you can put in your information here. And then here's the app. This one, I have here some properties here global properties. This is the helper that is going to help me sign the document and REST uh, client is going to help me make the calls, the request. This is the URL. Now I tried the sandbox at first and it didn't work but and maybe they made updates and now it's working but it's brand new API so not everything was working a while ago. Uh, this is just the content that I'm going to be passing to the REST client and here's the endpoint for POs or to get orders. So the main in uh, main uh, the main has just just passing. I'm just starting up my class here, passing all my information and then after that I'm just saying order import. So it's pretty basic. And just starting off my REST client with the live URL, you can swap it for the sandbox. And the resource, which is the PO, you do a get. And in here, you have to have an access token. If you don't have this, it's not gonna work at all. So make sure you pull that from somewhere secure. And right after that, you have to do the created after and create it before. I was hoping I could do just one, but you can't. You have to do both. So make sure you have a way of pulling this out. And here I'm just saying going back seven hours ago until now. 
and then you do your sign then you call your your class to do the sign request and you pass your request your rest client content url and there you go so here it's just a basic execute if it's okay then you deserialize your payload from amazon from the api from the content and then you can start it's going to be an array so you're going to go through the orders and then you can start pulling data out of it so your purchase order your order day there's a bunch more uh, your items you can go through it the price the quantity normal uh, looping basically here and if it does if you get back a forbidden then that means your token already expires i think it expires every hour or so so make sure you if you get that then just call your signature helper and just say get token then once you get your token then make sure you save it to your secure location and it could be a database or whatever you're using and then just call yourself back again basically you will do order import again and it will and it will go back into the the okay because you have a good token so those, that's all I wanted to share um, with everybody. The key part is not this, but the key part is getting Amazon to give you the credentials that you need. So make sure you get those credentials help read the documentation uh, from Amazon. And then once you have that, that, that information, then you'll be able to call the API with no problems. So hopefully this was helpful to one of you at least. And this is just the order import. Later on, I'm gonna have another, below here, another section um, to request labels. There's a, there's a way, there's a process that you can request labels. You can also submit uh, shipment confirmations. So there's a lot of whole, there's a whole process to do this. So. Hopefully somebody will um, understand what I'm trying to explain here um, and it will help somebody. But I will have the description, the GitHub link for this code in case somebody wants to try it out. And let me know if you have any questions for this basic uh, template. Thank you for watching.